So, now that you've got your fork off your bike, the big thing about suspension is everything needs to be clean. So you've got a nice clean workbench, you've got a lint-free rag, it's not going to leave bits and pieces in, on the fork or in the fork. Uh, we've got a nice, nice piece of clean paper towel, can be a shop towel, can be a kitchen towel. Um, something that you can lay things out on, so a good, good length, good size. Um, and first things first is just check everything. Check the whole fork, make sure everything's nice and clean. You can see that this headset when it came apart is a bit grubby. So what you want to do is you definitely want to get in there. You want to make sure that when you clean it, you don't clean it over all the nice clean area. And you want to get all that dirt and grubbiness off there as best possible. So make sure you don't have any contaminant that might get into the fork in any way. So now you've got a nice clean fork. We have a bike stand. Hopefully you have one as well to make your life a lot easier. Uh, most of you guys will be dealing with air suspension, so you're dealing with pressure. There'll be pressure in here. So even though we're doing just a lower service, we are going to be careful. We're gonna rather remove the air from the fork just in case something is loose inside. But you can use one of these. This is a valve remover. Otherwise, you can carefully depress the thing with your the valve with your foot with your finger. And you don't want to let it come rushing out all at once, because otherwise your fork potentially is going to get stuck down. You can see it's starting to move up in its travel already. If it starts doing that quite a bit, you need to equalize, putting a bit of pressure on it. And now things should be relatively safe. Here's your valve core. That's now out. And from here, you can turn the fork on its side. And you're going to want to start taking this end apart. So these are your foot nuts. Here, this has got a cap on this fork. It's a Fox 36. It's got a little cap. Protects your rebound assembly. Essentially, you want to take these foot nuts off and they are going to allow you to, once off, slide the lows off um, and get to the inside of the fork. Okay, first things first, we're going to take the rebound assembly off the bottom. Two millimeter Allen key in this case. A couple turns, and should slide off. In this case, a little wavy wash inside you've got to be careful of. You want to put that down on a piece of paper, nice and neat. Second portion of the assembly comes off as well. And this is where things get interesting. So in this case we have a 15 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and we want to loosen this nut. Just enough, probably about four mils off the bottom because you're eventually going to land up hitting this with a hammer. For the smaller foot nut, you need a 10 millimeter socket. Same principle applies. Loosen it off, turn it back, give yourself a bit of a gap. And then, plastic mallet. This is the important bit. Not a hammer, not a sledgehammer, not a brick. Beautiful plastic mallet. The rubber one can work as well if you had a pinch. Take the socket, put it over that foot nut, and just tap on it until it comes loose. Like that. You'll see that this, hopefully you can see this in the video, this moves freely in and out. It means it's come loose of the assembly at the bottom, which just means we can take that guy off. Once that foot nut is off, it's hopefully going to bring with it a little plastic washer. It's your crush washer. These are single use. You want to throw these away, but you want to make sure that you have a replacement and that should come in a kit with you. See the slightly larger one? That crush washer is attached. There we go. You 
can see there's a little needle sticking out the bottom here. Having the deep socket, it's going to protect that needle when you knock the shaft back into the fork. And you can see it's now loose. Alright, I'm going to swing the fork down towards the bath. Alright, now in one fluid motion, because the fluid is now going to come out, so you want to have an oil bath. Tupperware, preferably something like an old ice cream tub if you need something at home. But you want to be able to catch all that old oil in there. So otherwise it will make a mess on the dining room floor. And then just firmly press on the arch of the fork. And slide it vertically down. And you'll see all the old oil starting to run out of the base of the fork. So with your nice clean lint-free rag, you want to wipe off all the old oil on the stanchion and the assembly below. Make sure that you have an indicator o-ring. If you don't have one, grab one and put it on once everything's nice and clean. And then you want to do an a visual inspection. So you're looking for any scratch marks up and down the stanchions on either side. If there's scratch marks or signs of wear, definitely time for you to come see us. Uh, we'll chat to you about either having them repaired or replaced, um, or who knows, maybe they're not that bad. If it's all beautiful and smooth, then you're good to go. Also check these rods at the bottom. You want to check the damper, making sure everything smoothly cycles up and down. You want to make sure that the air spring also cycles up and down nice and smoothly. If there's any notchiness, if it starts to leak oil at the bottom when you press on, then pay us a visit to bring it around. We can have a look. So you've got your fork lows. They're off. Fork lows are now on the desk, all nice and clean. You can see everything's laid out so that we don't lose it or misplace it. You've got the one side, which is your damper side. You've got your other side, which is your air side. Um, you can see here the old crush washers all full of oil. There's the new ones. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look inside this guy. Have a look inside here. You can see this is your wiper seal. There's a foam ring inside there. What I'm using is a seal pick. And we just want to pull that foam ring out carefully and see what it looks like. You can see, in this case, that was not in great shape. That was kind of grubby. Should be a lovely honey color or white color. So in this case, this fork would now receive a full surface. We'd pull these seals out and we'd go to town, service your air spring, service your damper, and get it back up to racing um, quality. Cool, I'll grab it from you now. So you can see here we've got both the foam rings out. If it gets to this point and it's this color or darker, um, then you definitely advise to start rebuilding the fork entirely. It's gone over interval. Um, but essentially this is a new one. And you can see how radical the difference is in terms of color. If these aren't too grubby, you make sure that uh, you look after them. You can flush out the old oil on your clean rag and clean them out. So we're not going to do that with these ones because they're grubby. But essentially you want to press out all the old oil they're nice and clean. And then you'll reinsert them back into this gland in here on each side. Right, you can see here's the, uh, the old foam rings. Here are the new ones. Essentially we've cleaned out the lowers, we've replaced the seals on the top and you can see they're all nice and shiny. And what you want to do is you want to take your foam rings and you want to soak them in the oil that's for the Lowe's oil of your fork. For RockShox, it'll be a RockShox um, 
what is it? Zero eight thirty. Zero eight thirty maxima. No. no Okay, so for rock shocks, it'll be rock shocks lows oil, zero weight 30 oil. In Fox's case, they've got their Fox Gold 20 weight and their Fox 5 weight PTFE. So we will damper, so your air spring. I'm going to pop those in there, let them soak up all that oil, and then we're going to put them back into the gland on the inside of the lows. So we've got our lubricated foam ring. I'm going to pop it in there slowly work it into the gland see in that lowers it's all nicely positioned inside you want to do the same on the other side over here I would assume you're just going to video this or add it in Right, to make your life a little bit easier, you'll see there's a little bit of leftover oil on the inside of the gland of the wiper. You just want to clean that out carefully. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take some suspension grease, which is designed for seals. And you want to put a little bit in that gland in there. You want to wipe that all the way around. So you get a nice even film all the way around that wiper. So now we're going to get back into the reassembly part. You've done the visual inspection on the top. You've done the visual inspection in the bottom. Make sure that there's no foreign objects in there. You've replaced the foam rings and the wipers if you've had to. Otherwise, if you're at 50 or 75 hours and you've kept to intervals generally, all of that stuff will be quite clean. You would have had to maybe clean out some of the old oil but there shouldn't be any dirt inside so now you want to take your lowers slide them onto the bottom of the damper shaft and the air shaft and just make sure that those stanchions position nice and evenly over those wipers and then you just want to slowly wiggle them on making sure that you don't pinch a wiper and you'll see it will fold over if it starts to fold back off Re repeat the process you want to slide it on you'll feel it slides on nice and evenly you can see those are now touching the bottom of the damper and with the air spring and then you want to turn it on its side so you can see you have your damper and your air spring poking out the bottom you want to back that off just a touch make sure that you can get oil in the bottom if you get that you'll have some problems. So now you have your Lowe's oils um, for this Fox. We've got some Fox 20 that's going in the air side and we've got Fox PTFE which is going in the damper side. If you look in the manual um, it's going to give you all the weights and the volumes that you need to put in. Each fork is different so make sure you check. So obviously remembering which oil goes in which side whether you have your air side your damper side. You want to put the oil in the bottom. With the syringe will work. And you'll see that the fork is at a slight slant angle so that the oil doesn't run out. You want that to run in. And then you can slowly slide the lower legs back on until your damper and your air spring poke out. You want to grab your foot nut, your crush washer. If you don't have one of these, come see us. We've got lots, we can sort you out. You so you want to pop that guy on, make sure that the crush washer stays in the gland of the foot nut. And just slowly turn it on by hand until the bottom's out. You can see that's finger tight. goes the other one. Pop that guy on there. Turn that one down. Again making sure that, that 
crush washer stays in the gland of each foot nut. One thing you'll definitely have to buy is one of these. It's a torque wrench. Doesn't matter which brand, but uh, we like park tools. Um, and you need to look up in the manual again, every fork's different. Make sure that you torque each foot nut to the correct amount. Okay, with your torque wrench, once it's set, you'll notice it's going to make a click. You want to tighten that up. You can see that's activated at the correct torque. And then last but not least, you'll have a rebound assembly that needs to pop onto the bottom. Make sure that you line up that little grub screw there with the flat side of the shaft. Once it's tight, make sure that everything spins freely, is adjustable, nothing's binding, and you're good to go. Last but not least, your air has got to go back in. You've got your valve that's come out. Screw that guy back into the top there. Finger tight with a, with a nip. And then grab your shock pump. Attach. And inflate to the desired pressure that you need. And last but not least, don't forget the air cap. Because that, you'll see it's got a little seal inside. That's quite important. Because that seals that. It stops any dirt from getting in if you need to adjust the air pressure while you're on the trail. And that guy goes on finger tight. You've just completed low leg service. If you have any uh, questions, pop in and let's have a chat.